All right, so uh, I totally stole on this video off of uh, stuff.co.nz. They um, they shot this video of our crew just before we went to the Middle East, and uh, it kind of just talks. I think it's good. It talks a little bit about what, kind of what the MVG capability is. So we went up there in about August, um, mid-August last year, and we were there till December. Um, it's kind of one of the longer deployments um, 40 Squadron's had in a long time. Um, there, was a, there was another crew there for four months before that as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely one of the, the longer uh, deployments in some uh, interesting places 40 Squadron has had uh, for a while. Um, so yeah, this is... A, this is the Middle East area of operations, I guess. Primarily, primarily we're operating into Iraq and Afghanistan, um, with a little bit of other stuff mixed in. <laughs> yeah, that's what we did. Okay, so the way it works, um, I've been told I can say this because it was in the Air Force News. Apparently, it's okay. <laughs> so uh, the way it works, we, um, there's, there's, the Aussies have got this thing called Task Group 633.2, and it's basically their air mobility um, up in the Middle East. What happens when 40 Squadron goes up there, we don't become 40 Squadron, we become a, a asset from our ACC, and they, I can't remember what they call it, but um, we fit under this thing called the Air Mobility Task Group uh, up there, and we effectively become an ANZAC aircraft. So, um, there's, at any one time there's probably two Australian Js up there with, with, the, with our H model um, every other year almost. Um, so uh, the way it works is Aussies are obviously doing their thing up in the Middle East and we do our thing in Tataji and sc scattered bits here and there. So um, once we kind of become this ANZAC aircraft, we, we, we're, no, we're no longer a New Zealand aircraft so we don't just support the Kiwis and we just support the Australasian activities in the Middle East. So I guess this, the two, the, the, oh, I'll talk about it in a sec. Basically by the numbers, we flew, our crew flew 82 missions, 640 flying hours, and a 96% mission success rate. Now, that 96% is, I, I don't know how, how we got through it. So we have one crew, um, no, so anyone gets sick or anything, we've got absolutely no replacement. Um, 
members, we don't have a spare aircraft. So the, the, basically the Aussies up there have got spare aircraft and spare crew. So, um, and the other thing is um, the weather up there at different times of the year is absolutely horrendous. So having a 96% success rate was uh, absolutely amazing um, for us. Uh, I don't, know, I don't know how it happened, but it happened. Um, the hurt loves the hurt, I think. Uh, I suppose the big factor up there would be bloody uh, sandstorms, wouldn't it? Oh, like you wouldn't believe. I'm going to... That would bring you to a grinding halt, wouldn't it, your ops? Yeah. I'm going to skip this video. It's basically... Because we're kind of running short. It's basically the 633.2 commander talking a bit about what we do, but I'm just going to talk about it because I like to talk. Afghanistan. Basically, what we're doing to Afghan is we... Um, we do support the Aussie troops that are based um, in Kabul a little bit, but we also do this thing called ITAS tasking, which is the Intra Theatre Air Support System. And basically, it is for those in the Air Force, it's SATs in Afghan, um, and we'll fly around. It's SATs with certain stuff on board, so we'll kind of fly around a bunch of airfields uh, all over Afghanistan, and uh, and that's what we do. Um, primarily up there, it's um it's. The, the IT, so the ISAF is kind of run by the US, and the, the operations are primarily by day. However, we do some to do some at night um, um, up there. Where it becomes difficult uh, doing MVG ops into Afghan at night adds another layer um, uh, with safe heights and things like that, which the H model just doesn't quite handle as well as the J. So we kind of tried to get out of um, a little bit of this stuff because the J model has just got such better performance. Uh, in Iraq, okay, so I gotta be, this is what I gotta be careful about talking about. Okay, so we know that, so we're stationed in the Middle East and we transit to Iraq. Um, so basically, the way it would work is every other day we'd do, a, 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 so every second day we'd do a, a, a flight. Those flights kind of last, uh, the crew day is 18 hours, so you're absolutely wrecked by the end of it. Um, it would involve transitioning to Iraq uh, where we do whatever and uh, into Baghdad uh, and then would be put into places all around Iraq. Uh, I can't say where but um, we're supporting Australian soldiers so if you know where Australian soldiers are then uh, we, we, we kind of support them all around the show. Um, we can do a bunch of different things up there. Um, I know uh, like uh, things like airdrop and landing at short fields which I've, I've kind of talked about. Um, we're part, we are part of the coalition up there, so we do a lot of work for other countries as well. Um, I guess one thing where the H model does have a massive advantage over the J is that uh, we have a bigger crew, and that means that we, our crew duty is quite a bit longer. So when, whereas the Aussies transit there, and they lose, and then they can only do a couple of taps different places, our crew day is 18 hours, which is a pretty bloody long time, which means we can kind of do a little bit more work around the traps, and I think um, the commanders really, really liked that. That we could kind of do that. Um, as I say, primarily uh, MBG operations. So what? We, yeah, what, we we go to a bunch of different airfields. Some of them are huge international airports. Some of them are blacked out strips in the middle of nowhere, supporting kind of SF kind of deal. So yeah, really different ranging things. We took. You wouldn't believe the different um, different amounts of things or different kinds of things we took around the place. I remember walking down the back once, and there was like stacks of protein powder for this. <laughs> These, um, these guys, and then other times it was uh, really different. We, we take a lot of troops, um, kind of met a lot of, lot of good people. Um, uh, yeah, what else? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ch uh, so the challenges, so yeah. Okay, so <laughs> it was 50 degrees on the thermometer. When we're sitting uh, where we're based, it was uh, 50 degrees outside, so you can only imagine what it was on the flight deck. It was um, pretty incredible. <laughs> I, think, I think you don't know. But um, basically, we'd jump in the, on the flight deck and you'd be, it, it, it'd be like you'd just jump out of a swimming pool. That's absolutely horrendous. Um, the weather was another big problem. So, yeah, all of the sandstorm, fog, thunderstorms, yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> there's, not, there's not a lot of the routing that we can do is very limited into an out of theatre because they've got this massive country right in the middle of it that we can't fly anywhere near. So, yeah, the, the routing is really, really limited. So, <clears throat> when I think our navigators, 
the look on her face when we saw these thunderstorms outside and what was popping up on her radar, she, her eyes kind of popped out of her head. Now, the, by far the biggest thunderstorms I've ever seen, but yeah, they um, they, 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 they became really challenging. The other thing was, do, oh, sorry, <laughs> yeah, I have to say that. Around Dubai, um, there's a, the fog can all of a sudden go from nothing to every single air airfield and every diver is now closed, which, yeah, it can get pretty stressful sometimes. So uh, a couple of times we were coming back to, to Dubai and it would be, weather's all good, and next minute it was every airport and every continent was um, closed. And yeah, it gets pretty interesting. You don't really want to turn around. The Afghan terrain, which I've kind of talked about. The ground threat, yep. So I guess, what can I say? People, I guess maybe people don't quite understand the, the, the actual threats up there, but she's a, I think what we're doing up there at the moment is um, a little bit different to what 40 Squadron's maybe been doing in the last kind of 20 or so years. It's, um, it's very interesting. Uh, it's, yeah, yeah, it's like seeing fireworks pretty much even all the time. Um, and so, some of the weapon systems that are being used, uh, you kind of, I know a couple of times we like flew into this one particular aerodrome and we had no idea and everyone's, because it was all blacked out and everyone's kind of trying to look for this, um, this airfield and it was really hard to see and then they start launching all these rockets out of it. You can kind of guess how the crew felt <laughs> when all these rockets started firing out. But yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's a it's a pretty interesting place at the moment. Um, so it's, it's a lot different now than it was, uh, say, this time last year, um, and the fight's kind of moved a little bit. The cons, yep, sure, she's pretty challenging. The uh, Not a lot of English is probably smoking over the radio, where it probably should be, so <laughs> it can, can become difficult. And fatigue, so the way it was kind of working for us is uh, You'd work 18, well, you'd work a long crew day every other day, and then when you're swapping between Afghan and Iraq, then you'd have to swap from a day shift to a night shift, and uh, it can become pretty taxing <coughs> pretty quickly. I think that's all I, I want to say about it here. If, maybe we can talk afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Not off camera. <laughs> uh, okay, replacement. So, yeah, we've got to replace the hip. Uh, this slide says 22 to 23, probably before that. It's the outer wing that's the problem. Uh, and the 757 has got their issues as well. We've got a couple of other things being stood up to try and get into place. Uh, I've absolutely stolen these pictures out of the Herald, I think. <laughs> but they seem to know what we're going to get more than I do. <laughs> but yeah, so these are some of the options that we're looking at, I guess. Uh, the J. The A400, uh, C17, the uh, the Umbrella, and the Japanese aircraft. I think it's the C2. So, yeah. So I have no idea what we have. Get down the bottom. Who makes that this one? one? Yeah. It's a Japanese one. Right. It's a Japanese one. Oh, oh okay. That's yeah. a Jap one, is it? Yeah. Oh, right. So, uh, a lot of people have a lot of questions, me included. About <laughs> what we're going to get. So, uh, to I be think honest, it's the cheapest one on the right. We've got to be able to board more than two. So, yeah. that limits the choice. I agree. So, the dream, and sorry, if everything I say today is 100% my opinion and not Air Force. Okay. So, <laughs> I, I, I uh, for me, the dream would have been to get maybe a couple of C 17s and some perks that can support intra theatre stuff. Um, there was one rumor getting bandied around for a long time. P3 guys hated it, but there was um, that the, um, Lockheed have created this C hook. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's a roll on, roll off P3 in the back of a hook, and it's got like forward firing weapons and all this cool stuff. But um, basically, the rumor getting bandied around was that hey, if you buy ten of these things, your maintenance costs going to go way down. You can buy a flight simulator and put it in Auckland, and you've got these five hook. Well, sorry, these maybe eight perks, half of them can be used for P3s or whatever, and it could save a lot of costs, but I think the P3 guys would never let it happen. <laughs> that, that hurt one, yeah. that, that hurt what you talked about putting in the module, yeah. that was talked about before they got the first lot of hurts, was to get a C-130, do exactly what talking about they're doing now, yeah. what they were going to do, but they 
yeah. had their own little individuality. But that was the talk, yeah. one of the options then, back in the 60s. So, yeah, I guess from me, what do I think is going to happen? Man, I don't know. Get the cheap one, I'll get one, that 160 so, mil. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Good deal there. Yeah. And again, this is me speaking, I think. <laughs> There's, they've only ever made two of them, yeah. and I think they learned from the NH 90s what happens if you buy aircraft that haven't been tested. Yes. Yeah. So they've got the Texans now, and it was like the dream purchase, right? They bought it <coughs> off the shelf, it's tested, SOPs are like bang, go fly, and it was yeah. easy. And I think, I hope, I hope they've, <laughs> maybe you don't buy aircraft that. Yeah. yeah, but there'll be a different bunch of people that make the decision, and they won't the be cycle from today. You got it. Yeah. Cheaper maintenance, you haven't got the, I mean, the prop mechanism is such a bloody, you know, yeah. that causes all your problems is the props. Yeah. And without those props, you've got a twin engine jet like that carries the same payload as a hurt. Yeah. That's it. Or well, win, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> well, no. I mean, you know, yeah. for money wise and value, you're not going to have snag like you do on the hurt. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, we had, we had the Airbus down here. Yeah. And those guys, Depending on who you talk to, have got different mixed views about it. Like, um, yeah, I, you get into that one though. You get stuff like the MH90 is so complicated yeah. when you get snagged, and you look at those prop mechanisms on that. Yeah, you know, it looks at a real neat aeroplane. The technicalities on that aeroplane would be yeah. worse than a hook. And they got like contra rotating props. Yeah, which makes life composite composite props there. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. So I, I don't know. I don't know how. Like I'm not too sure if they're flying them into theatre yeah. at the moment. I, I I know they're having a lot of problems with how they did para because of the contra rotating props and guys jumping out the side doors oh, and being an into each other. So yeah. I like think the, I think the if they C want C17, so they've only just started rebuilding them again. No, I, so I think the production. So it's done now. I, I think they're done. Think whether they're going to do anything. Yeah, I think they're done. Interest from a few. Few nations want them, but whether they'll bring them back into production. I, I think the whole lot parked up on the desert. Yeah. yeah, I think the price tag killed their own models. But if you, if you, for me, I think if you wanted to solve the ice problem, I think the C seventeen is your solution because I don't yeah. think the A four hundred can make it there and back. But I don't know. Yeah, but you see, what would happen? The reality of it would be they would just charter a C seventeen anyway. And I think that's what they're doing at the moment, but it's incredibly expensive. Okay, yeah, sweet. Conclusion, sure, okay. Uh, we've talked about the stuff that we've talked about that's facing people's, but yeah, we've... Um, <coughs> well, that's an old fight of the DC-60, isn't it? Yeah. He's <laughs> flowing at all of them. <laughs> well, yeah. the Hastings as well. All of them. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I guess the, the, the most important point is probably that bottom point, is that... That yeah. four-wheel squadrons over the next five or so years, I think it's going to change its face pretty significantly. I'm not too sure how. If it was, if you're asking me, if I was a being man, I would say they're going to lease a lot of J's and figure out what they want to do, and then maybe in ten years reassess it. I don't know. That would be my guess. Yeah. But I, I really couldn't tell you. I, I, uh, there's guys with a lot more strokes than me deciding this stuff, and they know what they're talking about. So that's it. We're just going to bed. Uh, who's, does anyone have any more questions? I think. Yes, sure. Just when you mentioned uh, an operation here with the American Special Works earlier, the year was done. Sorry, say again? When is the operation with the Yanks coming down here? Uh, it's it's uh, later this month. Oh, later this month? Yeah, um, so we're based in Woodburn. Oh, okay. So you're yep. not saying about this one? Uh, they'll come through here, um, and we will have. They, they will be coming back here. Yeah, I'd say they'll be coming back here. We not we won't be based out of here, um, but they kind of like to fly around the, the mountains and stuff like that. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I don't even think that they're officially part of our exercise. I think that they're doing their own exercise. That's at the same time as that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So I believe in the sixties, your squadron operated in Malaya. Is that correct? Hey, Fire I, I, I couldn't tell you. That was 41. Uh, oh, yeah, 41. Yeah, I couldn't 41. tell you. They went in middle of it. Yeah. Operated into it, but not mostly. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't tell you. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, I, 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 maybe um, 
if anyone wants to talk about some other stuff, we can definitely talk about it afterwards. But other than that, thanks for listening. Sorry, I've gone away. Over. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to say, on behalf of everyone here, thank you for your service as well. Yeah, that's um, awesome. Yeah. And, and really good to have, uh, have you here.